Hello and welcome back to the channel. Going to take a look at creating water planes. This is going to be specific water planes to the map. I've already gone ahead and done it for this map, but I uh, wanted to kind of show you guys the method that I've started to use and maybe get something from it. So basically, this is perhaps maybe what uh, similar to the way giants um, create their water planes. So instead of coming up to here and then creating you know um, a single massive plane and then scaling that up <coughs> to fit the entire map surface and then dragging it up so that it kind of covers um, you know the areas that you've got your water that you want to set up and whatever else so something you know like that kind of thing and that that kind of works to a degree and then you can you know change your settings here so we go maybe 82 something like that and then I've got a water plane that's covering the map maybe that's a bit too high but you get the idea this is kind of the way I've, I've done it in the past myself and I've seen several maps um, that you know work in the same fashion or alternatively um, I've seen where instead of one massive great plane like this there's several smaller planes um, that are all kind of joined together to try and make up um, you know the area that you actually want the water plane to be and then when where the water plane kind of joins together the two different so you kind of have something like this you'll have like uh, multiple planes like this for example and then they'll be scaled up to fit so uh, if we kind of scale this up a little bit <coughs> and bring it up just to kind of show you you know what I've seen many many times so we'll have something like that which will be rotated maybe like that and then kind of drop down to fit the area something like this and then kind of you know scaled up like that and then another one is brought over and scaled up a little bit um, something like this and then kind of brought over and <laughs> you know put down like that and then um, dropped in and you know scaled in again to make it fit a bit better like that and so on and so on and so on forth but where it joins the two planes joined together you will get kind of some weird effects going on especially if you've rotated the plane because the way that the actual waves the simulation of the the wind blowing across the water depending on the rotation of the actual plane will be slightly different and it can cause all sorts of um, texture problems and things like that and it just doesn't look very good in my opinion so <clears throat> what I've kind of played around with in Blender is a method that might work uh, to actually maybe create a plane that's going to fit exactly where you want it to fit and it will be all rotated and scaled and whatever else correctly to fit exactly where you want it and no further you know anywhere else on the map so then potentially you know um, things like underground storage mods and things like that uh, can be used properly without the interference of the water plane um, and things like that <coughs> so anyway this is the method that I have been uh, or sort of trying to use and it seems to be giving me fairly good results so I figured I would share it with you guys and see if it's of any help so <clears throat> this will require, um, you know, Blender, Maya, um, a 3D modeling software application of some description. I'm going to be using Blender for this because that's what I have available. Um, and we will need to export the terrain out because this is actually going to be my template to trace around where I want to create the actual water planes. Um, I did try it with an image, so I created a camera similar to the way that you would create a camera to take a screenshot of your... Uh, map to create your PDA um, but uh, the resolution was so low that I couldn't really work out um, <clears throat> where things were and I even tried to uh, paint the area with a different uh, terrain texture so in here for example where the water plane would end up being I went in here and painted all around in here with wet sand or sand wet or whatever it's called you could possibly use like mud or some of that or dirt or whatever something that I thought was perhaps maybe be um, you know quite bright and would show up in the image better and then I'll be able to trace around that but the problem with that is um, <clears throat> a couple of different things again the resolution wasn't high enough to be able to see all of the area properly um, so I wasn't able to trace around properly and when I actually then created the water plane and brought it back, it back into into the Giants editor session there were gaps in areas and it didn't really work that well so um, <clears throat> that was not really kind of going to work for me in the way I wanted it to uh, so I thought no that's just no point to it at all um, <clears throat> now it might work for you guys you know you might be able to find a better way of doing that with an image um, 
the other thing is with the image is scaling you would need to make sure that the image was scaled correctly to you know the size of the terrain uh, so if you were to create a, an image and then you know take your screenshot or use something like the snip and sketch or whatever it's called this one here and then you know <clears throat> drag out and take your image like that uh, obviously this is just for examples but something like that that's not going to be the same scaling as your terrain so then when you actually create the image you're going to have to crop it and then rescale it to 2048 by 2048 for a standard size map which is then also going to mess up the um, resolution even more so again you know from an image it didn't seem to work very well for me uh, so the better way I found was to just export the terrain out as an OBJ <coughs> that I could bring into Blender and work with in that way and I knew that everything was going to line up properly and I had um, <coughs> because it's a mesh it was um, you know going to be a exact to what I needed it to be to uh, get the best results uh, so if you've never exported anything out of Blender uh, out of um, Giants editor before you'll need to change your scaling so just go into file preferences and then in the preferences window here under where it says save and export as OBJ or Wavefront OBJ by default this is 100 uh, but it needs to be set to 1 as far as Blender is concerned I can't say for Maya that might be different it might need to be 100 for Maya I don't know but uh, as far as Blender goes it needs to be 1 uh, because if you leave it at 100 and then export it out it will actually then increase the size it will scale the size of the terrain up to 100 so it will be massive um, and then again the scaling will be completely wrong uh, for creating a water plane now you could always rescale it in blender and then apply the scaling in blender and that would be fine but uh, it's going to be quite taxing on your system um, to actually export this out in the first place at the size that it is already so if you're going to export it out at 100 times its size um, potentially the system won't be able to work with that and it will crash and fall over unless you've got some monster of a system but to be honest with you it's just not worth the hassle it's just so much easier to come in here and change one thing uh, by reducing the scaling down from 100 to 1 and you'll overcome all of those problems in the first place so it's better to just do it that way in my opinion uh, so <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the other thing I found was when I exported the terrain out I don't know if, if, it, if it's because of its size um, and the way that the export process works or whatever else but if I had the camera zoomed in like um, over to here because when I was first doing this I thought right I'm going to create a water plane for this area here so I had them the, the camera looking specifically at this area and then when I exported the terrain out half the actual terrain was missing when I imported it into Blender it had gaps um, it didn't export the whole thing out now that potentially might not be a big thing because um, if you're working with maybe a 4x 16x whatever else that might be a good thing because you could zoom into an area specific to where you wanted the water plane to be something like this and then click export and then um, <clears throat> even if it didn't export the rest of the map out it wouldn't be a big deal because as long as you've got the area that you want to create the water plane for when you bring it into blender that will be fine and then just move the camera to another place where you want to create your second water plane or whatever somewhere over here like on this particular map and then export out again and it wouldn't matter if this part of the map wasn't brought out as long as you've got the area that you want to create the water plane for but uh, in this particular case on a 2x I would like to have the whole thing come out because I'm going to be potentially making all of my water planes in one go uh, so <clears throat> for a 2x that works okay and uh, I've got a fairly older system now so um, you know <clears throat> it is what it is but uh, the 2x exported out okay it takes a little bit of time but it's not too bad to be honest with you so that's fine um, and like I said I want to do all of the water planes in one hit so I want the whole map to be brought out that I can then just work with it as I need to <clears throat> so um, to get it out of Blender we just basically click on the terrain here in the scene graph file export selection find where you want to put it I'm going to put it on my desktop you can call it whatever you want it's not relevant the name of it because it's just going to be used as a template within Blender so you just call it one or call it terrain call it whatever you want and then make sure you choose your save as type as a wavefront OBJ from the drop down and then just click save <clears throat> and it will say down the bottom here exporting um, and like I say it will take a little bit of time um, again depending on your system performance or whatever else if you've got some monster system uh, then you you know um, it might just be 
seconds, but uh, um, I don't know. Like I say, my system's a little bit older now, so it takes as long as it takes. Just be a bit patient with it. Don't start clicking other places or whatever else, because you'll cause the uh, the uh, editor to crash, and you just have to start the whole process all over again. Just wait for it to finish. It doesn't take that long. Go and grab a drink or whatever else, you know, um, <clears throat> and then when you come back, hopefully it'll be finished. Uh, so, yeah, just, like I say, just wait for it to do its thing, and then you should be good to go. Um, like I said, I'm using Blender 2.82, or if I haven't said already, I am going to be using Blender 2.82. So if you're using an older version, 2.79 or previous, uh, why? <laughs> because 2.8 is just far superior in my opinion. Uh, but if you're comfortable with 2.79, then, you know, stick with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but uh, I would recommend to get, if you can, upgrade to 2.8 and upwards because it's just got so many bug fixes um, and uh, it's just an improvement overall in my opinion uh, but uh, you know work with what you've got but my point being that uh, if you are using 2.79 um, then things are going to look very different when I get into Blender so you'll kind of have to work around uh, the different shortcut keys that I'm going to be using and the menus won't be in the same places and things like that so you'll just have to kind of work around that but uh, it is what it is so that's now exported out so we'll minimize this one down and I'm going to open up Blender <clears throat> so let's say I'm using 2.82 a as it will say when it eventually starts up and then I've that this is the first time I've opened um, everything up today uh, in my, on my system so it's going to be a bit slow to start with version 2.82 a as you can see there um, so when you get into Blender, A to select everything, then X and delete. We want to get rid of everything default. We don't want any of that stuff. We'll get rid of that menu with the T key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to go File, Import, <coughs> Wavefront OBJ. Go to wherever you saved your terrain out as the OBJ file. Double click on that and it will then import it in. And again, like I say, just be a bit patient and uh, wait for it to uh, finish importing into Blender. <clears throat> but uh, again it shouldn't take too long and then we can continue on creating our water plane uh, so I'm going to be using a, um, like I say a method that uh, I have used for something else and I thought I wonder if this will work for creating water planes I gave it a go and it seemed to do quite well it gave me some pretty good results so um, yeah figured I would just say hit record show you guys see if you uh, see if it's something that you can use yourselves on your maps or whatever else okay so we're done I'm just going to close this other window down here because I don't need that so if you're not familiar with blender you can do this with I think in 2.79 as well just highlight over the because this is my um, timeline I don't want that in the way not that it's really a big deal but I just want to close it so just hover your cursor until you get the two arrows right click join areas and drag down and it'll just get rid of it just so you've got <coughs> a nice big space in your 3d view here to work with and then when you scroll out what you'll find is your terrain but it will kind of disappear and reappear and it won't you know you'll think well what the hell's going on um, this is because the clip distance by default is set quite low so just press your n key on your keyboard to bring up the side window here and then go to view and under the actual clip start clip end on clip end change it from 1000 to 10,000 for a 2x map is more than enough and then you can press N and get rid of that now we can see our entire <coughs> terrain that we've imported in as a wavefront <coughs> as a mesh so if we press 7 on the numpad to go into top orthographic this will orientate it in the right, right uh, direction or whatever else so if it's like here for example you're thinking well which is north which is south just press 7 on your numpad and it will orientate it in the right right direction so it matches what we have on our map here in game or in the editor um, and I'm just going to do the one water play in this particular case just to show you uh, quickly what the method is and then you know hopefully that will work for um, for you guys to do with the whatever you choose to do with it so <coughs> um, me personally I don't like this kind of uh, um, scratchiness or whatever you want to call that um, it's kind of a hard hard shading if you like so um, makes it a little bit difficult in places to see where things are and whatever else 
So for me what I tend to do is just right click and again this is for 2.82 and upwards or 2.8 and upwards. I don't remember if you could do this in 2.79, I think it was in the T menu. So you just press T and somewhere over here it will have the uh, shade smooth, shade flat. So we just right click in 2.8 and upwards and go shade smooth and that will just smooth it all out a little bit and make it a little bit easier to see. It's not so jaggedy and whatever else. Don't have to do that but I prefer to do that just to make things a little bit clearer to see what's going on. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I need to have something that I can use to trace around the outside here to create what I want to create and you could potentially do this in many different many, many different ways use different methods whatever else but I'm actually going to use like I say the one that uh, works for me and that is to create another plane so another mesh which is going to be a plane so I'm going to go shift A and bring in a plane uh, and you can do this many different ways if you don't have a numpad for example and you, you're thinking, well, I haven't got seven on my numpad. How do I go to top orthographic? Just come up to here and go view, viewpoint, and then just click top. And uh, you can see the shortcut there of numpad seven. So that will give you the same top down orthographic view. Um, and if you haven't, or you don't want to use shortcut keys, like for adding a mesh, you can just come up to here and go add mesh and then plane. Exactly the same, but uh, it's just using you know menus instead of shortcut keys whichever so if I press one on my numpad or again just go view and then viewpoint and we want front so it's front orthographic you can see my plane that I've just created is actually below my terrain that I imported and I want it to be above the terrain so I can see it a bit clearer what I will also do is um, <coughs> activate the move handles for the gizmo by default in 2.8 and upwards they are turned off so we just come up to here and activate those. And I can then just grab the z-axis and bring it up so it's just above the terrain like so. And I can press 7 on the numpad or use the menus to go back into top orthographic view. And it's very important when you do this that you are in top orthographic because when we're going to do the next part um, to start extruding out our vertices, if we're in any other mode than or camera view than top orthographic, when you extrude it will actually extrude in an odd angle and it won't match the uh, layout of the land so to speak uh, I'll show you what I mean by that when we get to it so I'm just going to grab it on the X this is the plane that I'm going to be um, creating my parts to trace around the outside of uh, the area for the warp plane so just going to drag this over somewhere where I want my start point to be and what I would recommend is to make the actual warp plane slightly larger than the area that you want it to uh, want to apply it to on the map just to give yourself a little bit of breathing room <coughs> um, and then <coughs> what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode by that I mean hit the tab key on the keyboard which will take me into edit mode you can also do that up here in the drop down so object mode edit mode again whichever you prefer and then what I want to be is um, I want to have it in vertex select so we have vertex edge and face I want to be in vertex select go to top select this top right vertex and I'm going to go control I to invert my selection so now it's highlighted or selected these three vertices down here and I'm going to press X uh, to bring up the delete menu and then press click on vertices to delete all of those I'm going to then tab back into object mode right click set origin to geometry so it puts my origin on that vertex um, again not necessary to do that but I prefer to do that so irregardless of whether I'm in edit mode or in object mode it's the cursor is in the right place for me anyway because um, <clears throat> it can start to get a bit confusing if the origin point is all the way over here somewhere <clears throat> and it gets a bit confusing on what mode you're in and things like that anyway it does for me so you know you can do that you don't have to but uh, I prefer to do that and then in edit mode again make sure you're in top orthographic in vertex select we're just going to make sure that we've got our vertex or yeah vertex because it's singular I guess make sure we've got that selected and we're going to press E to extrude and just drag out with our mouse and then click to create our first edge and then we're going to press E to extrude out again and E to extrude out again so I'm just pressing E dragging out with the mouse and then left clicking on the mouse button to complete the action 
so it'll just keep coming like this and then just keep moving your camera around now I've remapped some of my keys so they won't match what you've got and I don't know I don't think um, I don't know if <clears throat> let's just have a quick look here and see I don't know if um, what would that be under um, I don't know if that's part of um, screencast keys. I don't know if that's uh, <coughs> a plug-in or whether that's um, anyway, whatever. Like I say, my uh, I've actually um, remapped a lot of my keys, so they won't match what you've got. So there's very little point in me showing you anyway, because um, yeah, I'll be pressing buttons and you'll go, well, I'm pressing that button. I didn't do nothing, <laughs> so it's not much point. But anyway. I'll just try and explain best I can here so um, most of them are still default just a few of them I've remapped for my own purpose just to make it easier for me to work with what I've got so if you get to extrude out and then you think well actually I can make that vertex go down to here and that would be okay just press G for grab and then just move it with the mouse and then move it where you want it and then just left click to um, complete the action sort of thing um, you can also go into edge select so press 2 on the keyboard not on the numpad 2 on the keyboard which will switch you to edge select from vertex to edge or you can just click on the buttons up here if I select this edge here I can right click and go subdivide and then go back to vertex and I've now got a new vertex in here that I can grab and move that wherever I want it to to kind of clean things up tighten things up just in case because when you complete all of this and you've made it all round or whatever else one of the areas might be a little bit off so you might want to create a new vertex that gives you a bit more control and that's how you do it select the edge subdivide it um, <coughs> and you can create a new vertex to move that around however you need to so anyway we're going to collect this one again E to extrude and we'll just keep going round E to extrude um, I wouldn't recommend to make more than you need just make enough that's going to give you the outline that you're going to be using um, to trace around the area that you want the water plane so something like that um, and then we'll just press E to extrude and just keep going around and I'm doing this very quick now if you do that by accident I didn't press one of my I didn't use the correct keys so it's now moved and it's gone back into user perspective if you do that make sure you go back into top of the graphic so either number seven, uh, 7 on the numpad or again from the menus here viewpoint and then top because um, that's very important so if I just show you if I come into here for example just an arbitrary angle and I press E to extrude it's going to extrude it downwards or upwards or it's not going to follow the lay of the land and you need it to do that because otherwise when you get to the next the part we're going to do a little bit later on it will all mess up um, <clears throat> and we don't want that so just be a little bit careful with that and then <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll just keep going around so E to extrude and we'll go all the way up to the edge here E to extrude and just keep going around like so E to extrude move the mouse and then click left click on your mouse and just keep going around creating all your lines moving your camera where required now you might be able to do it zoomed right out but I prefer to be in a bit tighter so I can actually see what I'm doing and be more precise with my lines and whatever else so we'll just keep going around <coughs> like this So I'm just going to do this a bit quick so we'll just go all the way up to there something like that and again if you want to make changes just grab the vertex G to grab and move and just move it with the mouse and then left click to uh, put it where you want it <coughs> E to extrude and just keep coming around like so 
and then I'll just press G and go right off the map here and then E to extrude E to extrude and we'll just come back up this way E to extrude and then somewhere to there maybe and something like that You can always go back and if you get one like that just press X and delete verts um, and it will then just basically do that and you can just select this one left shift that one um, and it should join unable to connect okay let's go back a little bit and then what I'll do is I'll press X and dissolve verts there we go not delete del dissolve <coughs> so E to extrude E to extrude and then just keep coming around like so and then we'll just grab this one and move it in a bit tighter something like that will do and then when we get to this part we need to join these together because we want to fill this in create a face within this we need to fill it so they need to basically be joined together now what you can do here is a um, couple different things I use the snapping function so from the drop down change it from increment to vertex and then we can E to extrude and then hold down the left control and that will snap turn on the snap function we can hover over the vertex there left click and that one is now on top of the other one but it's actually not joined at the moment so there's a couple different things we can go alt M to merge by distance and it will then merge it but we need to make sure we select all of the vertices before we do that so we press A to select all of them go alt M merge by distance and it will say removed one vertices because or one vertis, vertes, vertes, I don't know, whatever it's removed one of those things so <clears throat> now this one is joined but the other way I like to do it is if I go back a few steps here is we have an auto merge function in 2.8 and upwards or it might have been 2.81 when this was introduced I'm not sure anyway it's called auto merge vertices so if you click on that then when we extrude this one out again with our snapping tool on and we go <coughs> E to extrude and then bring it out and then left click on the oh, sorry hold down left control and then when we hover over this vertex and then left mouse button click <coughs> it will um, put it on top of the other one but it will also now join them together automatically hence the name auto merge vertices so that's a really nice feature I like that um, just saves you having to press a lot of different buttons to achieve the same thing really uh, so now we can press A to select all of them um, and then press F to fill and that will create a new face and fill in all of that area there which is fantastic we can tab back into object mode if I hide the terrain um, make sure you're in solid shade mode and then come up to here and turn on back face culling if it looks the same when you turn the back face culling on and you can still see the face like it is here that's fine everything's worked out well but if it looks like that and it's transparent it means that it's the normals flipped so basically you have to recalculate the normals um, <clears throat> I forget what it was might have been control N in 2.79 I don't remember but anyway um, in 2.8 it's shift N so if we tab back into edit mode and go to face select shift N and it will recalculate normals and then you can just put a tick in the box if required and it will flip the normals around so that they're not like that they're like this basically um, the other thing I like to do is set the origin point to the geometry so again right click origin to geometry like so and that's pretty much that we've now got our water plane all set up um, for the area that's going to be specific to um, or it's going to be specific to that area on the map uh, so we just need to give it a material so <clears throat> if we go down to the materials properties and I'm just going to give it a material of material um, which is the default in blender the uh, default obj is for our terrain because uh, when we exported the terrain out of um, giants editor it automatically give it a, um, a default material so that's fine but uh, I don't want to use that because that's on the terrain I just want to create a new one um, for my plane, my water plane so I'm going to rename this and we'll just call this water plane you can also 
rename that again when you get it into into giant Serta or whatever and I'm just going to rename the material so we just double click in there and I'm just going to call this water underscore mat um, <clears throat> and then we can export this out so um, if I press F2 to get the name and just press control C to copy the name there hit enter file export giant size 3d and what I'll do is I'll go into the map which I'm going to put it into so we'll go into here and we'll paste in the name press enter and we want to make sure we tick up, tick the box where it says export selected because I don't want to export out my terrain again I just want to export the water plane so I'm going to click on the export selected so it only exports out what I've got selected which is my water plane fantastic so we'll click on export i3d and then we can minimize all that down obviously you will need the i3d exporter um, plugin installed in whatever version of Giants, uh, of uh, Blender you've got um, so you need to get hold of that and do that I'm not going to do that show you how to do that in the video it's fairly straightforward uh, um, to, to sort all that out so anyway now we've got um, all of that sorted out we can open up our map, map again and we just go file uh, but actually what I do first of all let me set the water plane up because sometimes when you bring it into if I bring it into the giant editor it makes it more complicated um, if I import it into the map because um, there's a lot more to work with then so what I'll do is I'll open it up in a separate giant editor session first of all and <coughs> I'll create my um, shapes file because we have a warning where it says i3d contains non-binary index triangle sets I like to always get rid of that first of all so I'm just going to go file save as we're going to the map folder here highlight my water plane i3d by just clicking it once and then the drop down save as binary i3d file click save do we want to replace yes we can close that down then it creates my shapes file as you can see here um, Maya I believe does this for you already uh, but uh, blender does not or the i3d exporter for blender does not so that's the only way we can do that if you're using blender that I know of so we'll reopen it again and we'll apply our materials so we can see or our textures I should say so now we've got no errors we can click on our water plane in the scene graph F to focus will bring us over to it and we don't want to change any of the attributes here because that is those attributes are specific to the area of the map that it's going to be assigned to so we need to apply our texture for the smoothness and metalness I would recommend to put those to zero and then under the normal map here we want to add our texture so we're going to click on the browse buttons here and then go into your farm sim installation folder wherever that might be um, maps textures uh, you can do this in um, the American one or the European one doesn't matter um, I prefer to do it in the European one but uh, <coughs> I believe the texture is in both uh, water normal that's the one we're going to be using so I could use it in this one now that I'm in here but just to show you water normal under the American if you go into um, the other one here so if I go back into here and then maps textures European just scroll all the way to the bottom and it's right here which is why I tend to use the European one because it's really easy to find because it's right down the bottom there one of the last few textures so water underscore normal and we click open and that will then give us this and then we need to add a shader uh, oh just so you don't just in case you don't know uh, material editing window you just go window in the file the thing at the top here the menu just go window and then material editing and this will open up wherever that might be and then <coughs> you can add in your texture and then just under the custom shader open up the properties window here <coughs> replace or add new shader again go into your farm sim, farm sim 19 installation folder data shaders and then we want ocean shader so we'll click on that it will do this and it will go all black and you'll think oh dear I've broken it and then what a lot of people do including me until I was told the right way of doing this <coughs> is click on simple for the variation and if we zoom in it does kind of then give it the look of a water plane it's got all the waviness going on the wind like coming across and doing all its stuff but um, because it's a simple variation 
it's not giving us all of the correct parameters. We've got no refra refraction or reflection information. Um, we've got no transparency uh, to the warp plane or anything like that. So it just doesn't look as good as it could do. So I would recommend to leave the variation on none and then go ahead and save it. Then we can close that down. <clears throat> and then what I would, what I was shown is if we open up the i3D in a text editor, I'm going to use Notepad++. And what I would do is also open up <coughs> the um, one of the map base maps. I'll open up the i3D. So again, back into your farm sim installation folder here. Map DE or Map US doesn't matter, but I'm just going to use Map DE. If I right click on that and again open up in my uh, or any whatever text editor you you prefer again I'm using notepad plus plus I'm just going to go control F I've already done this a few times but uh, so it'll probably be in my drop down there we go <coughs> search for one water underscore mat which is the name of the material on the base maps for the water planes and just click find next and it'll bring you down to the appropriate place you can see here we've got this reflection and refraction information but in my water plane we haven't got that because it doesn't automatically create it for whatever reason there's probably something in uh, Maya that does this but uh, again for the blender exporter and whatever else it doesn't do this so we have to add these lines in manually which is fine there's no big deal easy to do so just highlight both of those lines there the reflection and refraction information control C to copy it Come back over to your water plane that you've just created under the normal map file id click return to make a new line and then just paste the information in now we've got all of our information where it needs to be fantastic and we can click save on that close all of that down um, and then when i go back into the water plane again <coughs> so if i go back into here and open this one up We'll now see that it looks very different. So if I highlight it in the scene graph, F to focus, and it looks all see-through, and you think, now I've really broken it. Well, actually, you've not, because it requires some sort of background um, for the lighting to actually go through the water plane and then uh, refract and reflect and give us all the correct shadows and things like that. So when you actually get it into the map, it will look a lot better, um, which I'll show you once we actually get it into the map but first of all I want to add in some user attributes to make this an actual water plane so again for this we can go back into um, notepad plus plus and we can open up our <coughs> base game i3d again if I go control F to bring up the search window and just do on create and go find next somewhere down here usually somewhere at the top it will have um, the information for the water so you can just copy the information out of here uh, determine whether your water plane you're creating if you're creating multiple water planes is the main water plane um, obviously if you've only got one then it would generally be defaulted to the main water plane anyway but if you've got multiple water planes across the map figure out which one you want to set as the water, the main one um, and then you need to add that um, extra user attribute just for that one water plane so we're going to take the name from here and just copy it go back into my water plane here and then you need to bring up your user attributes window so again window and then user attributes and this will pop up so we're going to put in our information here <coughs> so under the add new attribute name we're just going to paste that in and again this is if you look in here it says it's a boolean the type is a boolean and it needs to be set to true for your main water plane so we'll go back to here again from the drop down make sure it's on boolean by default it is anyway but uh, just make sure it's on boolean and click add and it'll give us a little tick box so we put a tick in the box fantastic and then the next one we need to add in is our script so it's going to be on create and the type is a script callback so if we go back to our water plane here again in the add new attribute window for the name <coughs> paste in the on create and then from the drop down script callback and add and then we can go back over to here and uh, copy our value which is the actual script part of it 
So we'll make a copy of that, environment.onCreateWater. So we'll go back to our water plane and then just paste that into our window here. Hit tab, lock it in. Fantastic, save that. we we'll close all of that down. We don't need this anymore, so we close all that down. Now I can import it into the map with all of the correct attributes assigned. So I just go File, Import, find where it is. So I go to my desktop here, into my map folder, double click on my water plane, and there it is in the map with all the user attributes in the right places. Now if you remember in Blender, I actually set the water plane, or the when I cr started to create the water plane, I set it slightly above the actual terrain. So if I press 1 on my numpad to go back into s front orthographic, you can see it's slightly above the terrain. So you could potentially um, lower this down in Blender before you export it, so it gives it the correct attributes exactly. Uh, but to be honest with you, it's just as easy to do that in, in Giant Editor, and you can see it much clearer because it's all textured, whereas in the uh, Blender session it's not. Uh, you could apply textures, but it's just a lot more work than is really necessary because you can just drag it down here in the Giant Editor to make it fit where you need to make it fit, and good to go. And there we go, we've now got a water plane specifically created for this one area of the map, so it will not interfere with anything else. Um, if you wanted to start putting placeables down or whatever else, um, <clears throat> our water plane is not going to potentially cause any problems, um, unlike if we have one massive great water plane covering the entire map surface. Um, yeah, so hopefully that is, you know, giving you some information there to work with to create specific water planes for your maps. And as I said before, like with the reflection and reflection, reflection and refraction information in the i3d for the water plane you can now see we have a proper underwater fog set up and we have some sort of transparency as well so we could potentially put underwater foliage and it would work properly whereas if you use the simple variation on the shader um, it's not going to give us the right kind of effect and then our underwater foliage would be very much um, useless because it will be very difficult to see through the uh, the water plane to actually make it um, worthwhile. Anyway, yeah, so I think that's, you know, <clears throat> pretty straightforward there. Uh, like I say, a method I started to use for something else and thought, you know, I wonder if this would work for water planes. And as I say, it's kind of given me some fairly good results. You know, it's not, doesn't take that long to do really. Uh, I think the most time consuming part is waiting for the terrain to export out of the giant editor and then import into Blender because it just takes a little bit of time because again it's a very complex mesh um, it's not only its size it's subdivided many times to make up what it is so you just have to be a bit patient with that side of things but creating the water plane itself is fairly straightforward and simple just make sure that in the blend in the um, Blender <coughs> session here that you're in top down view so top orthographic seven on the numpad and then just create your parts as necessary and uh, give it all your material and whatever else. Um, now if you create multiple water planes, uh, so if I, I've got another one over here obviously as I showed earlier on, and there's another one here, if I create all of them together with the same material, name and everything else, and then import them into the Giants Editor session, whatever I change to one will change all of them. So if I, for example, I've got some over here that I want to put in somewhere over here just here I believe um, there's one here and there's another one here and this is going to be the cow husbandry area um, it might even be pigs I don't know yet I've not decided but anyway irregardless the underwater fog here I want to have a slightly different color um, so if I was to export all of the water planes out at the same time if I change the underwater fog color on this one it will automatically change on all of the others as well um, so just be a bit careful with that. If you want to have uh, water planes with slightly different um, colouring to them and you can do that in the shader area under your material editing window. So we have this underwater fog colour and you can change all the different attributes here um, as well as wind scale and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> so if you don't want to, if you want to change all of them together then crack, crack on, you know, create all your water planes, export them all out together um, put them on the map and then whatever your changes you make to one will be global but if you want to have um, water planes that have slightly different effects 
as far as the underwater fog go and things like that then export them out individually and perhaps maybe even give them different material materials um, material names <coughs> so that uh, you can control them individually yeah so hopefully that gives you some information to go on um, I'm Sean Wizard thanks very much for watching I'll catch you on the next one